Hi, uh, it's July 6 today and it's my birthday. But Aww. instead of doing a birthday vlog, I decided to continue waving the rainbow flag and celebrate and talk about pride and equality. This is my vlog series, Oh Franco Wow. I am Franco here in Beijing and as you can see in the title, we're going to talk about pride and equality. I know uh, June 28 was the last day of the celebration of Pride Month but I still want to talk about this because in some countries and some cities like in Ireland, they still celebrate Pride until the second week of July. But anyway, really excited for this video because it's my first video collaboration featuring all the people who I really admire. Let me just check that this is definitely recording. Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, uh, can you say your name first? Like, oh my God. Oh. Hey, Nicolo here. Um, <laughs> okay, I hope that's enough for the dumb thing. They are the people who are an inspiration to me when it comes to this fabulous topic. Hi, I'm Jack, I'm 32, and I'm from Taguig City. Hi, my name is Julie Papango, a clinical laboratory technologist and humanitarian aid worker from Albany, New York. Hi, my name is Mark, and I live in Florida. Hi, I'm si Nicolo Cosme, 40 years old, but I'm 22, from Manila. I'm part of the island in the Philippines. I'm 31, Irish, I live in London, and I'm an actor. Hi, my name is Fabulous. I'm from the Philippines and I'm a multi-hyphenated unicorn. I'm Fanka, I'm from the Netherlands. I decided to talk to them because I, I won't pretend that I know a lot about this topic. These are the people who are really vocal and proud speaking about their pride. When I ask them, What is the importance of pride t for me? I think it's one of the most important things is to feel proud and to feel a sense of belonging. That in itself makes you feel empowered. It makes you think you belong. People are afraid of things they don't know in anything. It doesn't matter if it's religion or culture or food or anything like that. Pride is always viewed as one of the seven deadly sins. Pride is huge to me. These days it's more about partying, getting together with friends at a bar or a pool, and that's fine. It's the way it should be. It should be celebratory. Pride for me is a movement. It is a conversation that seeks to challenge mindsets that are oppressive and are hurtful. Aside from pride being a celebration, it is also a protest. Pride historically is a protest and will always be a protest for equality rights. But back in my day, it was more about protests and demonstrations to get rights for the gay movement. We get to join in solidarity with our LGBTQI plus brothers and sisters to fight for all the causes that we believe in. Their different interpretations about celebrating prior or what is it for them have different stories to tell. But even though it's so different, all of it has the same core. And as what St. Augustine said, pride lurks even in the most good ways, waiting to destroy it thereby creating evil deeds. I completely disagree. And I think so much of the world today makes us feel like we are broken, we're damaged, and what differences we may have makes us, it's a part of us. Pride is a way to show people that it's there and it's not scary. This is also very important for us to honor those who have paved way for some of the freedoms that we are enjoying at this point. For example, back in 1994, my boyfriend and I flew from Chicago to New York to take part in the 25th celebration, 25th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, which is the beginning of the gay movement. It was huge because that was the beginning of the gay movement 
and they were celebrated every year thereafter, and that's where the Pride marches came from. I think it's a celebration to show. If you need a moment to show the world, this is also part of the world. Like, you need a little bit more attention. We have to understand that it's a fact that some of, some parts of the world are able to access and enjoy equality rights. But there's still a huge part of the world that isn't. Way back in 1974, until that year, if you were gay, you could be declared mentally insane and put away in an insane asylum. Can you imagine that? Just being attracted to the same sex? They will never understand why I love a woman. But that doesn't mean that we are not equal. Which is why we need to continue to take space, speak up and stand up for equality rights. We get to celebrate who we are and show the world everything about the LGBTQI community. That's why Pride to me is very important. We should be able to stand up and hold our head high and think, no, there isn't anything wrong with me. I am gay or lesbian or however I identify. And I am proud. That's what I like about Pride, it's just to like show that there is diversity. And just like the fabulous queer people who fought and died so that we could have a life and for the rights that we are enjoying right now. There's a lot of people before us who rallied, who protested, who died, who got incarcerated, who needs to, who needs to be honored and remembered during Pride. And not just during Pride, but all throughout the year. And having this sense of Pride is how we're gonna progress. Advocating this sense of belonging and feeling special is how we move on from this, this fear of, of ourselves and how people will perceive us. That thought, the importance of Pride, involved in every generation with the changes that occurred in the past decades. One of my biggest questions will be... Am I proud of the changes on how the world sees equality? Am I proud? If you'd ask somebody who's 40 years of age or older right now, looking back 20 years ago in 2000, would they have expected to see gay marriage or gay adoption or gay biological parenting or gays in the military or gays in politics? They would say, no way. You're crazy. You're insane and you should be in, in an asylum. We've come a long way, but I still think there's a long way to go with equality. Equality? No, we're not there yet. Got ways to go, but we've made a lot of strides. I mean, I would say, of course, it's a good change, right? Now that it's already 2020, of course, we see a lot of improvement on how the world sees the LGBTQI community compared to the discrimination and prejudice that we've faced all throughout the years ago. That is why I'm happy doing this video because one of the powerful tools of educating and passing information is... Talking about it is the most important thing for all of us, really. There's some, so many people out there don't understand it. Maybe I'll just say this. Uh, I always remind myself that I can be much prouder. Change has occurred and it has been positive and it still will be as long as we keep it in the forefront. It is, it is important that these changes occur, and it's good that in many different countries they come out. We have to keep pushing ourselves, otherwise we're just going to go backwards. And I think we are getting to a point where equality is on everyone's lips, and that's how it needs to be. I don't have to relax or stop the energy and the enthusiasm the fire that I have towards the promotion of and, and, and furthering of the cause of equality rights. Because learning from the people who speak their truth, I think people will really listen. And from there, it can inspire. But I think it's good that governments are realize that there should be equality. So everyone should have equal rights. And if you know you want to marry someone of the same sex, then it should be it should be allowed. Because living in your most authentic self, being with a person that you deeply love, and honoring that innate sense of who you are to be the best version and expression of humanity in you, is not sinful.
we can't deny the fact that discrimination and prejudice towards the LGBTQI community still exists. We may have come a long way, but there's still a very, very long way to go. And as long as we join together and we fight together, we will make sure that the road for the LGBTQI community will always be a bigger and better and brighter path than what it is now. I think there's many people out there, like myself in included, who are afraid to be themselves. And I think only through talking about it and pushing boundaries and stimulating conversations, these challenges that appear every day that people shy away from, we need to address that. To continue that movement and to continue that conversation so that the future of our queer children will be better and will be more fabulous than what we are enjoying right now. One perfect example is a story from Mark. In 1993, to the 25th celebration of Stonewall, I flew to Washington, D.C. for the March on Washington. A million people showed up to march. And the importance of there was that it was the first time that many people had gotten together and were willing to expose themselves as being gay to the press, to the, to the news. Until that time, businesses didn't cater to the gays. We weren't marketed. But after that, when they saw just how many people with disposable income were willing to show up and be counted, all of a sudden airlines and hotels and clothing companies and alcohol distributors and sports teams catered to the gay market. It was wild, it made a huge change. In as 2020s, Pride celebrations are quite different from the past years. I still believe of continuing the legacy of Pride. Although Pride Month has already ended, I think that our messaging should never stop as the Pride Month ends. Pride does not end. When we finish waving our flags, we have to remember that June is only the celebration, but we, we have to live pride each and every single day. I think people forget that we're human at the end of the day. All of us have this basis of being human. And people forget that when they hurt us or put us down or tell us we're different or broken. And I think that if I could say to anybody out there, anybody else out there, it does get better. Just be yourself, right? It doesn't matter if you're gay, straight, <laughs> queer, whatever. We are moving into a society that's more progressive. And it's a great thing. It will continue until our societies will honor and respect our sexual orientations, and gender identities and expressions. Realize that what you do today may have an effect on somebody tomorrow or next year or 10 years from now that you have no indication is going to happen. I would not be here uh, as I am if I wasn't affirmed in the past and so I would like to share that blessing. Quality rights does not exist, including the Philippines, for example. Which is why it's very important for us to be the voice of those people who don't have the voice. For example, the Stonewall Riots. Back in 1969, there was a 14-year-old impressionable boy living on Long Island, 60 miles from New York City. Uh, who saw those riots on TV for four nights in a row. I didn't identify with the guys in drag, but I did identify with the fact that people were willing to stand up for the rights. They made a huge difference. Especially for those who have questions and for those who are struggling, you are not a sin. You, you get to a point where you, you start to tell yourself, I am special and I am beautiful. And even if these people think that there's something wrong with me, they're wrong. We do belong, and I think that's what pride is all about, is this sense of belonging. The LGBTQI community is a family. If I could say anything gets better, it's this. You'll get to a point, if I could look back in little version of me and say, you will, you will have amazing moments and amazing time shared with people who will support you and believe in you and want the best for you. And you should want the best for yourself despite what everybody is telling you. Always be strong. Never, ever, never, oh, 
Oh, sorry, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> oh. I'm getting emotional because the happy tears there. I'm I'm proud of who I am, but there are moments where I think it would be easier to not talk about this, to to go back into the closet to hide. Even if you're experiencing enjoying access to equality rights, it doesn't mean that that rights cannot be taken away from you. It's not only about sexual orientation, it's about just being yourself and who you want to be. I just want to remind every LGBTQI individual out there that you are not alone and that you should never ever be afraid to show who you are. We need to speak up. Speak up. Speak up. Speak up. Stand up. Take space. Be proud of who you are. Honor our roots. Um, just be yourself. You don't need to conform to stereotypes from other people. Talk about pride. I take great pride in helping bring about change over the years to the, with the gay movement. We've come such a long way, and we still have a long way to go. Love, bravery are the essence of pride, according from their stories. Pride is not celebrated because we are just queer. Pride is for the future world that we believe in, where equality exists, and we don't need to beg and demand for it. To end, until we no longer need to justify our existence, and no one dies based on stereotypes, prejudice, and discrimination. I'm, hope, I, I'm hoping that there will be a point that I can experience that there will be not a country where I have where it will negative, negative, like, like jail or death sentence. You should always feel like you are beautiful and special. And like, look, I'm wearing. I'm wearing rainbow, I don't know if you can see, and I think that's a lovely interpretation of, of all of us. We're all one big rainbow. You are wonderfully, fearfully, and fabulously created sa imahe at wangis ng dakilang may likha. So celebrate that. Always hang in there, and things will always get better. Be smart, be safe, be kind, and be proud. Together, we can be in a, a better world.